this drawn on scribble effect has become really popular in music videos. The great thing about it is that it's really easy to do. Here's what I'll be showing you how to make. It's a very basic example of this technique and once you follow along you'll be able to make something a lot more complicated like the videos that you saw in the beginning. So if you want to follow along exactly with the stock footage that I have just go to my website and you can get that footage for free or you can just watch and learn a technique and then go ahead and start making your own projects. Alright, I've got Blender here and I'm going to click off and we're going to go to the bottom left and we're going to change from the 3D view to the video sequence editor. And right now it's just got where we can put film strips in it, but if you click this little button right here, we, we can see both of them. I'm just going to drag this really far down because we mostly just want to see the video. I'm going to click add and click movie. You could also use image to bring in an image sequence, but in this case we're going to bring in a movie. So I'm going to click movie and I've got mine on the desktop and if you want to follow along I've got this video on my website um, and you can download it uh, otherwise just watch what I'm doing and uh, learn how to do it. So I've got the video here I'm going to bring up the resolution to 100% zoom back out a little bit here and now we're ready to get the grease pencil up. Okay so if your right panel is not up like me I'm going to go ahead and click N and it's going to bring up this right panel. If you scroll down, you'll start to see you'll see these grease pencil options here. Um, in earlier versions of Blender, I was able to get there's additional settings for the grease pencil that um, I can't seem to get while in the video sequence editor. Um, if anybody knows how to get those, uh, please leave in the comments and let people know. But we can still get lots of cool results um, with what we're getting here. So I'm going to go ahead and click New Layer right here. Scroll down now, and so here you'll see some grease pencil settings. And if you haven't drawn yet, I've seen that uh, you don't get to choose the color right here. So again, there's there's a few little quirks with this, um, but you can still, like I said, get great results, and you can have a lot of fun with it. I know they're doing a lot of work on the grease pencil for the next release of Blender, so I expect there to be a lot of um, other things coming, and maybe some of this will be changed. But so I'm going to hold D and left click and just kind of draw outside of the frame right here. And that's I'm just doing that just so I start getting my settings here. Um, so for example, I've got the stroke right here. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up and get a bright yellow. The opacity, I want to be fully up to 1. And I want it to be see-through at all. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and bring the thickness all the way up and my sensitivity all the way up. And so now let me scroll out a little bit and hold D and left click and just draw over here, let go, and you can see that stroke there. So you don't have to do 10, um, you, know, you can bring the thickness down um, if you'd like. Maybe I'll actually go to eight, let's see. Hold D and draw. Yeah, maybe I'll actually leave it at eight. Um, okay, so we're also gonna want onion skinning on, so if you click right here, basically this is just going to let you see um, lines that you've drawn in earlier frames. So I'm going to go for two before and two after in case um, we are, how we're working in the timeline. So um, basically you just want to start, you know, tracking motion. So if I click and drag here, I'm just going to just kind of observe the motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a trail that follows this arm as it goes across and then once it goes back behind the body I'm going to stop and then I'm going to make a trail that follows these this arm and this leg right here because that's going to come up and make a nice little motion alright so I'm going to jump back to the first frame right here and let's start working on it okay so yeah I'm on frame one I'm going to hold D and I'm just going to click right here and just leave a little dot. And then you can use your arrow keys left and right to jump uh, frames. So I'm going to go over one. And you really can, um, you could do this every frame or every two frames. If you, you know, the more, if you do it every frame, it's going to be smoother. Um, 
but it just depends on your patience and the amount of time you have. I think I'm going to go ahead and do every frame, and I'm just going to start get things started here while explaining what I'm doing, and then once I show you a few frames, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward and let you kind of watch, but in a faster speed. So I'm on the second frame, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in a bit, and I'm just going to, and so if you held D before and you haven't clicked off, you can see I still have a paintbrush there, so I don't have to hold D this time. And I'm just going to click from where we were over to where the hand is now. So I'm going to jump over a frame, and I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to click where I was, move it to where the hand was, or where it is now. And I'm just going to jump over. And really, right now, we're just not, little mo not a lot of motion. I'm, I probably should just be doing every two frames. Um, when there's a really fast motion, that's when it makes a lot more sense to do um, every single frame, but I'm just going to keep going ahead and uh, doing it like this. So I'm jumping ahead. That one didn't move at all, so I'm going to go two frames, click, and just go here, go over, jump a frame, and so now you can start to see some motion coming in really, and so I'm going to start at where that one ended and drag it over, click at where that one ended, drag it over, Okay, that one didn't move at all. Click and drag over. So I'm just using um, right on my arrow pad with the arrow keys to jump a frame. And I'm just click and dragging over like so. I'm just going to keep doing that. Let's see. Uh, I didn't like how that one looked. I'm going to hit Shift Z. Make it not quite so abrupt there. Jump over. And I think this is where I think I'm going to have it end for that arm. So um, I still have the brush here. I'm going to click off. And if I just drag, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to turn off onion uh, skinning for the moment. And just do a little drag here. Okay. So yeah, I like, I like how that's starting to look. Go to frame one again. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I would uh, advise just saving a lot. I haven't experienced crashing with this. In earlier versions of Blender I did, but I haven't uh, lately, but it's still just always a good idea to be sure to save these projects often. Okay, so actually, I don't need to be on frame one. I'm going to drag ahead to where we have our last frame. Actually, I'm going to start using my arrow pad. So that's where we left off. And you see, you'll see this dot. So I'm going to go one past that last dot. This is just here because we haven't made any new marks yet. It'll go away in a moment. So I'm now going to follow this hand and this foot. So I'm going to hold D, click here. And I don't need to hold D anymore. I will click here. And I'm using the right arrow key. And you know I am going to jump ahead two frames right here. I'm going to click and drag from there. And I'm going to click right here. Maybe I'll make this a little thicker. Okay jump ahead two frames I'm clicking and dragging from this one and oh, I actually forgot to turn the onion skinning back on so I'm gonna click off turn the onion skinning back on um, hold D and I'm gonna draw this one in still maybe go back a little bit just to give it some difference jump ahead actually I'm gonna go ahead and do this one on one frame pull this one back a little bit still, jump ahead, drag this down, and really just keep going on like this. And after this, I'm going to start speeding it up when I do the second half, but just want you to see kind of what I'm doing here, and I'll start just kind of speeding it up. So, you know, you can be more precise and smoother. I'm just kind of keeping this quick for the tutorial. All right, dragging up. Make that arc around, bring this to the foot here, up to the arm, boom, up to here, there, and then maybe what I liked doing before was stop focusing on these two points and switch to this leg. Let me click off and just kind of see what happens next. So 
So that leg will come up. Yeah, so I'm going to do a quick preview. So the arm swings across. We follow the arm and the foot. It goes up. And yeah, so I'm going to start following the other uh, leg here. So I'm going to jump back. So I drew a frame there. Drew there. Okay, so this is new. So I'm going to hold D, put a mark right here. And now I'm going to start track tracing this foot. So jump ahead, go up, jump ahead, go up, following this leg until it's all the way up. Maybe I'll follow it back down to. Actually, that was bad. I'm going to hit on Control Z. I just wanted to actually follow the tip of that foot more. Jump ahead. All right, so I'm going to click off of that. We're at frame 49. So just to preview this, I'm going to put my end frame at, let's just put it at 50. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Start and just kind of see how this looks. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to fast forward and I'm going to add a little bit more just so you can see um, another example of something you can do with this. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to kind of scroll ahead and just show you when she does her second jump, I'm going to have her kick away some objects. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I've got my video here and I'm happy with it. Um, I've got, so it's ending on frame 126. I'll hit play just so you can see what's going on here. Basically, she swings her arms around that way, gets followed, a couple little balls come in and she kicks them away. You know, it could be uh, better, but I just kind of want to do this for demonstration purposes. All right, so now let's actually render this out. So I'm going to uncheck onion skinning because otherwise that will show up in our render. And let's just check our settings here. So I've got this all the way up to the resolutions all the way up to 100%. I'm going to change the output. Just go ahead and put it on my desktop. I'm going to just call it dancer. Hit enter twice. And I'm going to change PNG to this video uh, right here and change the encoding. Go into the preset and I'm going to do the H264 MP4. And so that's just going to put out a movie rather than an image sequence. Um, we don't really need to bother with that for this. So um, everything should be ready. Onion skin is off. The resolution's up. And I'm just going to go to this button right here to open GL render. And I'm just going to click on that. It'll render pretty quick just because it's an open GL render. Let it go through your frames. You can see the balls coming in. She kicks them away. Okay, and that's all you need. So if I'm going to go to my desktop and open up this dancing video. Oh, taking a moment here. Let's see. There we go. And there's the finished product project. So really have fun with this. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to hit escape so you can see this again. You can add additional layers. You can have different colors. You can have multiple different things happen at, um, at the same time. Uh, so yeah, really do whatever you want with this and have some fun with it.